This is not a troll video, I swear. So today guys, we're gonna be talking about EIP 1559 and how it affects you if you're mining with NiceHash. There are quite a few misconceptions regarding NiceHash, even just the plain fact that they think that they're mining Bitcoin and that's not true. We're gonna explain how NiceHash works a little bit to clear up that misconception so that you can then see how EIP 1559 will affect you if you're mining on NiceHash. But before we get into it, if you guys would like to learn more about cryptocurrency mining or cryptocurrency in general, click the join button down below for $1.99. You can get access to the privately hosted Rocket Chat that I run. It has that small paywall just to prevent scammers, spammers, and bots. And you can cancel the membership and maintain your registration to the chat. So no worries there. Okay, so. EIP 1559 for the uninitiated is essentially a change that is going to happen on the Ethereum blockchain or the Ethereum network that will essentially cut down the fees that miners are paid out while not cutting down the fees that the end users are paying. It will make the fees more consistent, which is the argument more consistent for the network means it's easier for developers and that's the positive. So there's the two sides of that. And it does this by essentially burning the fees or a portion of it is for burning the fees because the worry would be if they don't burn the fees that miners would drive the fees up. What NiceHash does is essentially rent hash power for various coins or algorithms like we talked about before. Each individual coin has different algorithms and those algorithms behave differently on different graphics cards and different hardware. So the GPU you have will dictate which algorithm is the best for that GPU and NiceHash will usually be able to benchmark that and do what is known as profit switching, which is also available in other software as well that we can talk about later, including of course Minerstat, which is the most probably the most famous for essentially profit switching on Windows at least. So, all right, now that you understand that you are not mining Bitcoin directly, hopefully, then you know that you are probably mining a different coin and then basically somebody is paying you to mine that coin and they're paying you out in Bitcoin. That's how it works. So what coin is most profitable to mine right now? Well, it's Ethereum. So more than likely you have downloaded another miner in the background called Phoenix Miner and NiceHash is running that Phoenix Miner with a batch file provided by the renter on NiceHash. Now let's pop in over here and take a look. So what I wanted to show you guys is most people have never even seen this page when they're downloading NiceHash and mining. This is where you can place your marketplace orders for, of course, mining various algorithms. As seen here, you can select the algorithm you wish to mine and then you can scroll down here. And this is currently Ethereum and you can look at the market prices for renting hash rate. The big key here is the pools that you need to pay attention to. And anybody here can basically essentially select whatever algorithm they want and then set the pool and then set the port and username and password. What that essentially is doing is building the batch file that Phoenix Miner is running when NiceHash opens it. So this is an example of a Phoenix Miner batch file that I've configured, except I am running the batch file myself and running it to my wallet address and to the pool of my choice. Now you don't get to make the pool of your choice or the wallet address changes or anything like that because that's what NiceHash is doing. It is modifying this batch file and then it is essentially letting you rent out your hash power at a very base level. So that's kind of the idea. What does that mean as far as in regards to EIP 1559? And this is where it gets important for people on NiceHash is that essentially you aren't gonna have control over which pool you are mining to. And because there is basically a battle going on over EIP 1559, pools have chosen sides, which means as opposed to you, the miner choosing which side you want to be on, the renter on NiceHash is going to be the one who decides, of course, which side they're on. Now, this is also something going out to the mining community that you guys need to be paying attention to because it is possible, as we saw in the comment section of my previous video, people were talking about whales and the amount of control and influence they hold because whales are just what that means is essentially 
rich guys or at least crypto rich guys, they are going to be able to influence towards the decision they prefer. So right now you have pools that are against EIP and you have pools that are for EIP. If they come into NiceHash and decide to utilize whatever hash rate they can on NiceHash to influence that decision uh, between the chain split, if EIP goes through, then you need to be aware, right? You could be mining an improper chain or so on and so forth. If you don't care about that, as long as you're getting paid on NiceHash, that's fine. But you need to keep in mind that that is going to influence the market at the end of the day. So at right now, with the current projections of EIP 1559 profitability, according to Bitsby Trippin, Correct me if I'm wrong, but we will see a potential decrease in profit between 30 to 40% on Ethereum, which means renters are not going to want to pay you the more the going rate as they used to. And you should expect a 30 to 40% decrease in, of course, your profits on NiceHash. Now, I think that there might be a weird little in-between phase where you actually make more on NiceHash than mining Ethereum directly. Like I said, because I think there might end up being a breakout on NiceHash as far as the battle between these, these two sides goes. That is a possibility, which could be kind of funny to watch happen. My recommendation would be to learn how to mine directly and then use that to put your vote in on which way you think it should go. But if you continue to use NiceHash, always remember to pull out your Bitcoin as much as possible so you don't lose anything. You don't want it sitting in that master wallet. And I hope this video explains a little bit better why EIP 1559 will affect you. And hopefully you can make an informed decision on which applications you prefer to use. I'll see you next Tuesday.